Hey everyone, I just wanted to jump in here. First of all, wish you a very happy Easter weekend and give you a few quick tips on how you can stay on track and still enjoy things. So the first thing I would say is, if you're gonna be indulging in any kind of sugary treats, chocolate, etc., it is Easter weekend, it's okay to do this. Keep it moderate, first of all. Let's keep the goal front of mind. Um, but yes, of course, you can indulge, just keep it moderate, as I say. But there are a few things you can do to improve and or at least maintain your results as best as you can if you are going to indulge a little bit. And what I would say is the first thing is understand that you need to deplete muscle glycogen before you eat sugary foods. This really contributes massively to metabolic flexibility um, and to your ability to process those carbs and sugars in a different way. So when we eat carbohydrates, they are always broken down into glucose. And that glucose gets taken up by our muscles and by our liver in the first First instance and obviously initially it will go into the blood and then it's going to get stored so the next place for it to go after that is going to be your muscles and your liver and those are the first two storage sites and it gets stored in the long-term form of glucose which is known as glycogen now that's one of the main reasons that we are building muscle mass on this program is then you're going to have better stores in which to store long-term stores of glucose i.e. in your muscles. Your liver is small and can only store a certain amount before you're gonna to start to get things like fatty liver. After your muscles and your liver are full, it's then gonna get converted into fats. This is in two main forms, triglycerides in the blood and fat in the form of adipose tissue in your body. So if you think about it, if your muscles are already replete with glycogen, there's nowhere for this glucose to go. So what I want you to do is deplete muscle glycogen first. So you can do this in two key ways. You can go for a fasted walk, you can go for an exercise session, um, you can work out at home, you just move your body in any way is going to help to deplete muscle glycogen stores. The other thing is just have a rule, we said about having a 12 hour fast a fasting period a day, make that a rule, like that is just the gold standard now, whatever you do in your life you're always fasting for 12 hours, so the moment you stop eating and drinking at night you do not eat or drink for another 12 hours. That applies whether you're on holiday, whether it's Easter, whether it's Christmas, no matter what you're doing, it's gonna make such a dramatic impact just keeping to that. If you can go a bit longer, brilliant if you've really indulged. The trick is that when you have indulged, what's gonna happen is you're actually gonna wake up hungrier than when you haven't indulged because you're not in a fat burning state. And if you were to look at something like the Lumen device that I talk about, it would actually show you as burning a combination of fats and carbs in the morning, or maybe you're even more in the carb category. So we want to transition into fat burning. And one of the best ways you can do that is with fasted exercise. You don't have to go all out, you don't have to do anything crazy. Even going for say 30, 40 minute fasted walk on Easter Sunday morning is gonna be helpful. The other thing is try to avoid what we call unopposed carbs. They raise your blood sugar much more quickly because there's nothing there to slow it down like protein or fats, which actually sh slow down the release of glucose into the blood. So what I would say to you is avoid just eating a sugary treat on its own. Yes, if you have it post meal, there's gonna be a slight elevation for longer. So it will be a less of an elevation, but for a longer period maybe, but it's not gonna to lead to that rapid rise and then uh, a fall in blood sugar, which then is gonna make you crave more things, number one, but also that rapid rise leads to a big rise in insulin. And this is important because we cannot burn fat in the presence of high insulin. We cannot burn fat in the presence of high insulin. So we need to avoid that. We need to keep blood sugar stable if we want to enhance fat loss. So that is key. The more you can crowd things in, in this and any day of the week, and crowd in things that are satiating, like protein, healthy fats, vegetables, fiber, things like that, the less you're gonna be craving those sugary sweets in the first place. The third tip that I would give you is before you're eating or post eating, or you can do both if you want even better results, is to do a small bit of movement. Short, sharp burst has been shown to improve insulin sensitivity post meal. So this could be 60 seconds of body weight squats at the counter just before you eat, for example. It could be doing 60 seconds of jumping jacks. It could be that you eat and you improve uh, your insulin sensitivity by going for a postprandial walk for 20 minutes. Really nice thing to do, 20, 30 minutes, particularly here in the UK, we've got a lovely sunny weekend. So those would be my three top tips. First of all, make sure you are depleting muscle glycogen regularly before you're refueling it. Avoid unopposed carbs and do some exercise. Um, even if it's something like 60 seconds before or post going for a walk. The other thing that's a really great one is a Tabata workout. If you haven't come across this, we'll be talking about it a bit more in the program. This is 
four minutes of exercise. You pick one exercise, the easiest thing to do, so it might be body weight squats. You set a timer and you can get free Tabata apps on your phone and you basically do 20 seconds of that one exercise with a 10 second rest. Repeat it eight times through. Trust me, if you do body weight squats on a Tabata, you will ache the next day. Really hard if you want to set yourself a challenge, do push-ups pretty much going to guarantee you will have to go to knees in that process. But again, that's something like no matter how busy you are, you can integrate really, really effectively. So you can use these little hacks to help you over this weekend. Keep on track. I know you've got this. I'm so excited. We're into week one. We just want to keep going. And apart from that, I just wish you a very happy Easter. And I hope you really enjoy it with your family and friends.